Hello, Cheryl here, and I am excited to be wrapping up our Follower versus Fan Sum It Up devotional thread. During the month of February, we have been focused in on Matthew 5, 6, and 7. It's actually the Sermon on the Mount. And we have also taken an in-depth look into these scriptures during our message series on the weekend, as well as our devotionals. And what we've realized is that the insights here, these chapters of Matthew, are literally like a masterclass that Jesus was teaching. You see, he's sharing concepts and he's sharing life principles that will change the course of how we live if we will choose to embrace them. And embracing these concepts will be what will define us as a follower and not just a fan of Jesus. In these scriptures, he teaches us what to do when we realize that we have a need for God and how to allow gentleness to live within us and that the best thing we can be hungry for is righteousness. He teaches us how to show mercy, how to work for peace, and how to respond when others aren't treating us properly. He goes on to say that the follower of Jesus should be like salt and light so that others will see God's love within us and then be able to find hope for themselves. He even teaches us what it should look like when we're angry and what we do with that. He teaches us about lust and what needs to happen with that and how to keep our word by being people who do what we say we are going to do, how to love our enemy and how to fast for spiritual purposes, how to recognize what we really treasure in our heart and how to be a generous person and he also teaches us what to do with worry. You know, my friends, if we will adopt the principles and the concepts that are taught by Jesus in this master class, the Sermon on the Mount, the fruit of our lives will be good fruit. We will walk in close relationship with him. And then we find the truth of scripture that we can ask, we can knock, we can seek, and we will find the answer to our needs because they are found in him. And so I get the privilege of wrapping up this month today, and I want to share with you Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Let's take a look at what scripture says, and it says this. I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Everyone who hears my teaching and applies it to his life can be compared to a wise man who built his house on an unshakable foundation. And when the rains came and the flood came, and fierce winds beating upon his house, it stood firm because of its strong foundation. But everyone who hears my teaching and does not apply it to his life can be compared to a foolish man who built his house on sand. And when it rained and rained and the flood came, the winds and the waves beating upon his house, it collapsed and was swept away. Wow. That's pretty vivid. You know, growing up, my dad was a bivocational pastor, meaning until my mid-teens, he pastored a church full-time and he had a full-time job. And that full-time job was that he was a general contractor running his own construction company. And there were many, many times that I was able to go to his job sites. And I actually loved being able to go visit. Sometimes I would even get paid for cleaning up those job sites. But the truth is, even though I was on the job site, I'm a novice regarding construction. But what I did pick up this truth that any structure, the foundation of a structure is extremely important. And I also know that there are different types of foundations and the prep for each type is vastly different. And isn't that what Jesus is teaching here? He's saying you can build your house, your foundation upon one way or the other, either the rock or the sand. And now you can build on both, but the sustainability is going to be vastly different. Because I'm a mom and a grandma, I'm a Nomi, that's my grandma name. It also reminds me of a kid's story. Remember the story of the three little pigs? You know, it wasn't necessarily the foundations that were different, but the actual type of structure each of the pigs were building, they were vastly different and that resulted in a different sustainability only one house remained standing. I believe the entire teaching of Matthew 5, 6, and 7, this masterclass, if you will, from Jesus, 
has led to this one question. What life do you want? If you will choose to adopt these concepts and these principles as the lifestyle you build your house upon, if you build your life upon this rock, this firm foundation, you'll have one outcome. Or if you choose to ignore these concepts and principles and to do life with your own best ideas and your own efforts, your life or your house will be built upon the sand. A life built upon the rock, which is Jesus and his teaching, is going to provide you with this assurance that when the rain comes, and it will, my friends, and when the floods rise and the winds and the wave beat upon you, you will be found standing firm. You will be found standing strong because your foundation and what you are established on is the rock, Jesus Christ. However, the life built upon the sand, which is our own best ideas, and choosing to live with behaviors that are in conflict to Jesus' teaching, when the rain comes there, when the floods rise and the winds and the waves beat upon you, unfortunately, you will collapse and you will be swept away. Sobering, isn't it? But dear ones, I pray that you will take this masterclass, the Sermon on the Mount to heart, and you will choose to build principle upon principle of the rock. My friends, Jesus and his teaching are the only solid thing for us to build our lives on. And it's the only way to experience that satisfying life that Jesus said is ours. The choice is yours, my friend. Choose well. Blessings to each and every one of you, and I'll catch you next time.